Joining me now, Anna Mao, Chief Spokesperson for the uh, New Federal State of China. Anna, thanks for being with us. Um, let me let me ask you this: uh, the CCP's recent recently issued a, uh, a capability improvement requirements for foreign related mobilization. What on earth is that, Anna Mao? Hi, John. Thank you very much. It does sound very complicated. And, you know, when you first look at it, it's like, what is going on here? But certainly, that's why we bring it up, and that's why we share here on the platform. Well, yeah, that's what um, the CCP has recently been issuing. And uh, just from the man, it might sound a little bit confusing. But what it really means is, the CCP has been preparing for the war in the Taiwan Strait, and we have shared this before. And, you know, it is on the moment as they have issued this right now, it really shows what what is going on. And has assigned, the CCP have assigned various relevant departments uh, with their drill content already planned uh, for the next three to six months. Okay, so it's already planned over there. So at present, the CCP have eight aspects of the capabilities that they want improvement. Um, and these improvements are for, um, for them as foreign-related um, issues um, that they want to target. So now we break it down into the eight parts and we are looking to what exactly it is. So first of all, we're looking to the CCP want to improve in the ability to coordinate with the CCP friendly countries uh, to support them. Okay, so the CCP want to have more coordination and seek more support uh, from the countries from the region uh, that, that support the CCP. So they want more support. And then the second thing is they want to have more ability to divide, separate, and attack Europe and United States. So they want to improve our ability for that. And the third uh, ability they want to have uh, improvement is to use hostile countries against the U uh, United States to attack and interfere with the United States. So the adversaries of, uh, of the, the U.S., you'll be looking into that because the CCP will be having more ability, will be giving more funds, uh, probably giving more support, and then they would use that to attack the United States. Now, fourth, our fourth thing over here is the capability to keep South Korea at bay using North Korea. So we know that the CCP have a huge um, you know, push through North Korea and what they have been doing in the past. Now, they want to use this as a mechanism to keep South Korea um, on the hold. Okay, so we are already halfway through. This is the fourth. Now, the fifth over here is international public opinion. They really want to influence on the international public opinion. They want to influence the p way people think, the contents you're looking at, uh, what you're getting through, through your media, through your, um, your everyday life. They want to influence the way that they can do it on that. And uh, sixth over here is the reconnaissance and intelligence. And they want to strike on these aspects for the countries that they want to, you know, have the attack on, have the strike on, have the conflict. And uh, we're already at the seventh one over here. It will be to deceive, to mislead, to have more abilities on those. And last but not least, it will be to have the ability to respond to unexpected and uncontrollable external environments. All right, all eight of those. So all eight of those, we have went through it, but that's what the CCP want to have focus on in the recent times. That's what it is. So Anna, let me ask you this. Are they looking to put together a kind of anti-West, anti-American, anti-free Europe coalition, kind of like, uh, you know, the old George Bush axis of evil with, uh, you know, I guess China, Russia, Iran, uh, you know, other countries in the in the region that that, uh, you know, Gaza that, you know, wouldn't particularly be friendly to us. Is that kind of the the objective here? I mean, the, the longer term objective is to just put together an anti-American coalition that may someday participate in an assault on the U.S. or the West. Yes, yes, all in all, that's, that's what it is. Thank you for breaking it down. And, you know, all they, these aid, as, you know, complicated as it may sound, in the end is to achieve this as a result. And, you know, they, as they have planned for the next three to six months of the uh, departments with the military drills, all these relevant, um, you know, you, you can see outlines, um, it is in the end 
going to be preparing for the war in the Taiwan Strait and targeting the United States and Europe. That's what we can see over here. Um, simple, nice and sound and clear. Yeah, the CCP have planned it all the way through. So where do, where do we go? Where do, where do we go from here? Yes, what, what a very nice, important um, question. Uh, what can we do from here? So, you know, I have, I have uh, seen a lot of uh, what the CCP have recently uh, been implementing, uh, have been carrying out, and all the plans. Uh, and this is not the first time they have, you know, come up with such plans um, to target the United States, uh, target the country, the nations in the West. So how can we actually solve this? Now, of course, the new federal state of China, we always say uh, we don't, uh, you know, we don't ask, we don't seek, we don't require any uh, form of military support. Uh, we don't want uh, America to send our uh, young soldiers, our young men onto the battlefield. Uh, we don't want that to happen. But the best way and the easiest way is, of course, to t cut out the relations and cut out the support towards communist China. Because look at over here, if, if you look at, um, like we have just shared, the CCP want to influence the uh, international public opinion. They want to influence on, and they want to deceive and mislead the people. And you might think, okay, what can, what, what can the people do? But when the public opinion has been greatly influenced, impacted, and been led to the wrong way, they can do whatever they want. Because what they, what they have been carrying out in the past will become what is right for the past because what they have planned here no one would know it has been wrong so of course in the end we have to realize what's the problem and sp stop supporting the chinese communist party it is very simple and is already here put on through the you know through our show you're on the john frederick's media network truck the truth across america we're with anna mel Anna is senior spokesperson for the new federal state of China. These are very courageous people that um, are of uh, Chinese descent. They've come here to the U.S. They are fighting the CCP. They're fighting communist control. Uh, they have put their families and their uh, and their safety at many at, at many times at risk in order to get the truth out. This is not an easy thing that they're doing, and I have tremendous respect. That's why I have them on my show all the time, uh, because you guys are the ultimate freedom fighters. Because you're at risk every day. Got uh, you know CCP police uh, units uh, embedded in cities that we do nothing about. I mean, I, we've been over this a hundred times. Um, yeah. What is their deal here? What is their? What's the CCP doing with North Korea? I mean, they obviously they tolerate that little whack job. Uh, mm. You know, he doesn't really fit. He doesn't really fit the button down kind of way they they <laughs> operate. Uh, but. You know, North Korea is totally dependent on Beijing mm -hmm. for everything. So, how do they kind of coexist with the, with a little creep? Oh, very much. They they coexist and they live upon each other. And you know, if we look at the North Korea and the military, they don't have the military capabilities um, that they have used. Um, when they, for example, when they um, put out the uh, underwater submarine missiles um, as a threat and also to pose as a big muscle towards uh, the surrounding regions, towards Japan, towards, um, you know, the surrounding waters, towards, um, you have South Korea. They, they can't do that. You know, they don't have a lot of the military capabilities. But who is funding that? You know, that's, that's the Chinese Communist Party. That's a real source of funding funding for the military uh, and for a lot of the resources um, and they are they are already currently and in the past frequently making deals with one another to achieve their ultimate goal and which is you know to, to disturb the West and then to make the biggest and possible profit and to get their outcomes. So, you know, the North Korea doesn't have the capabilities, but it's the big brother. It is the CCP supporting them at the back. And that's that's very, you know, um, loud and clear over here. Yeah. What's their position, Anna, with Iran? Like, mm. What is their relationship there and what is the long term goal? Yeah. So, of course, with Iran, another um, axis of the evil country, um, the regime that is greatly cooperating with the CCP. So remember the CCP always um, has this thought 
that the United States cannot fight three wars at the same time. They cannot deal with three conflicts at the same time. So the CCP have um, set up the, uh, and also supported Russia to in, uh, invade uh, into Ukraine. Okay, so that's the first step into Europe. And then the CCP have stirred the conflicts in the Middle East. So that's already the second region of conflict. And now they are also targeting towards uh, Taiwan Strait, towards the South China Sea, and stirring the waters over there because they are thinking that the United States cannot. And that's that's their plan, and that's what they have understood. And according to what they have got as intelligence, as information, the United States cannot um, deal with three wars or three conflicts at the same time. So that's why they are playing the game. They are spreading, you know, their hands, their arms, their reach towards all these different areas. Is because ultimate goal is to target the United States over here, and you know that's that's why they are working with Iran, uh, working with uh, Hamas, uh, a lot of the um, terrorist organizations, and just you know doing what they can and performing all these acts. But in the end, targeting people in the West. That's the final goal. Are they in favor, you think, uh, Anna Mao, the spokesperson, senior spokesperson, new federal state of China, uh, is the CCP, is, is the, uh, the Beijing government, are they in favor of Iran getting a functional nuclear weapon? Oh, I would say very much so. Um, and it wouldn't just be um, Iran in this case, because the CCP have a lot of support um, nuclear-wise, technology um, or support as the nuclear funding, uh, development funding um, towards a lot of these access evil countries. So Iran is indeed one of them. Um, but, you know, many of the place, if you look at the CCP and how they have been making the deals, making, um, corrupting different, um, you know, the systems with the different countries, um, one thing in particular would become um, the, the topic and the aspect would definitely be the nuclear weapons. Because nuclear technology, uh, like we said, same with a lot of the other ones, um, some of the countries, they don't have the whole system. You don't have the whole, you know, updated, not, maybe not enough funds, or maybe not enough um, personnel-wise, or maybe not enough, um, you know, the whole uh, technology basis. But who is funding them in the end will be the Chinese Communist Party. And definitely one part big over here would be um, Iran and the nuclear weapons. But, you know, just keep, keep in mind, it's not Iran, just Iran over here. There's multiple other countries we'll be looking at when we talk about and discuss about nuclear capabilities. Yeah. What, uh, I got one more, one more thing I want to flesh hmm. out here, Anna, Anna, Anna Mao with us. Um, what is the what is the goal? What is the what is the CCP goal with Japan? I mean, they just had a meeting, kind of high level meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. What is their what is their position on on Japan? What do they want to see there? Do you think? Yes, of course. Oh, thank you very much for bringing this up. Uh, we know that Japan has um, it's it's quite a you know interesting situation. So Japan, of course, um, have a long term relationship uh, with Taiwan and also with a lot of the surrounding uh, regions. And um, if you look at what the CCP put inside Communist China, in, in the mainland China, uh, with the medias, with all the social medias, they always portray Japan, uh, same with the United States, as the countries that's always enemies. So they always put, you know, Japan, um, and you have uh, United States with some of the Western countries as the ultimate enemies the CCP want to bring down. So if you look in this way, how they try to use and stir the public opinion to achieve their goal, then, you know, of course, here, what we have recently seen is, um, with, with the updates and all that, they want to target Japan, they want to target uh, Taiwan. You know, and then um, break the relations, uh, create the conflict, break the relations, and you know, possibly in the end, uh, breaking the connection that they have uh, with one another, and maybe achieving their goals. So, yeah, that's the CCP over there, always stirring the waters, and there's not going to be one peaceful moment here. Yeah, that's the CCP. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, mm -hmm. You think they have any? Anything to do with these riots on the college campuses? Now I have about a minute. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. 
Um, I would say very, um, very much, because from all these financial fundings, um, you know, years back. And also, if you look at a lot of the CCP's high-level kleptocrat families, they always send their, um, you know, heads, their uh, people towards these college campuses. So that already sets out the rule and sets out what we'll be looking at. So in the end, yes, I would say very much, at least indirectly even, they have.